The previous video was an overview of HTML emails. In this, the second video in the series, we'll look at designing your email. Before you delve into writing the code, it's worth spending a few minutes planning your email. Don't think of this stage as wasted time, more likely it's the opposite. It will save you time in the long run as you'll know exactly what you're aiming for when you begin to write the code. Also, a well-planned email is much more likely to be a success. When planning your email, ask yourself a few questions. Who will the email be sent to? What is the aim of the email? What is the ideal outcome? What are other positive outcomes? Let's answer these questions. The email will be sent to existing customers of my company. The aim is to share the latest news about our awesome new product. The ideal outcome is that they click through to our website and buy our product. The other possible outcomes could be that they follow us on social media or that they remember who we are and what we do. At a later date, they may decide to buy our product and they'll know where to find us. These answers help us decide what to include in the email. We'll include a customer name, text with the news and information about our product, a strong call to action for the reader to click through to our website, and a logo and social media buttons. Now that we have decided on the content of our email, we can go ahead and sketch a design. This could be done using pen and paper or using any simple graphics program. We'll start by using a simple white background. You can choose another color, but white is good because it is the same as plain text emails and we're aiming for a subtle design. Next, we'll choose a font. HTML emails are restricted to WebSafe fonts, so it's a simple choice. Here we can see Georgia, Palatino Linotype, Times New Roman, Arial, Comic Sans, Impact, Lucida Sans Unicode, Tahoma, Trebuchet MS, and Verdana. First, we'll get rid of Comic Sans and Impact. They don't suit our needs. Next, we'll lose the serif fonts. We want something modern. We'll delete Arial because it's quite common and also Lucida Sans Unicode. This leaves us with Tahoma, Trebuchet and Verdana. From these three, we'll choose Trebuchet. Now we'll select a color for our font. Let's choose a gray. That's a bit light. Something darker would be better. Yes, that's perfect. Dark gray. Now we'll choose an accent color. A light orange is bright, but not garish. We'll adjust the size of the text too. We'll bring the header size down a bit and increase the size of the paragraph text. That should be easy to read. Now that we have decided on our typography, we can add the content of the email. It is very similar to a plain text email at this stage, this encourages the customer to read further. We have kept a lot of white space so that the email is clean and easy to read. Further down, we'll add some headings and columns. This means that skim readers will read the important points. We have also kept some white space. Next, we'll add our call to action. This is arguably the most important part of our email, so we don't want it to be missed. Let's put it on the left. Finally, we'll add a signature. A logo. And social media buttons. That's our email now fully designed. Simple. In the next video, we'll cover writing the HTML to turn this design into a fully functional email.